From the heart, you just made my day. Please enjoy. Sam's Son and Delilah, by Faishan Danzi, Chapter 4 Julianne Loveland, lay on her soft bed in agony. She moaned for mercy, as her labor pains came at three minutes apart. This was not how she had wanted, to be spending, Christmas Day. Mary Angel, the maid, and Lizzie, the soon-to-be nanny, were by her side. The women did their best to comfort Julianne. They assured her that the pain would be well worth it when her child was born. Rosalie sat silently in the far corner of the room. She usually worked outside, tending the garden and feeding the pigs and chickens. But because she too was with child, Mr. and Mrs. Loveland had agreed that she work in their home for a time. The cottages that their slaves lived in were of considerable quality. But Grady considered them unfit for a mother and a new baby. Rosalie shared a small room with Mary Angel and Lizzie, who were quite happy to have her there. They had been very hospitable, allowing Rosalie to have one of the two petite beds to herself while they shared the other. This was Julianne's first time giving birth. She did not know what to expect. Why does it have to hurt so much? The pain is too great, she sobbed. And where is Grady? I need him. She feared something was wrong. Don't you worry none, Mrs. Julianne. You will be just fine. You and your baby, Mary Angel promised. It won't be too much longer now dear. Mary Angel was in her late forties. One would never have guessed by looking at her though. Because she was so petite, she was often mistaken for a child. She placed a damp cloth on Julianne's forehead, then turned to Lizzie. Go fetch Mr. Loveland for me. Her voice sounded a little too meek and timid for her to be giving orders. Let Lizzie stay here, Rosalie abruptly interrupted. Mrs. Julianne might need her. I know nothing about delivering babies, so she should stay. Before either of them could protest, Rosalie hurried to the study, where she thought she would find Grady. She knocked softly, and then waited anxiously for him to answer. She pushed the door open just enough to look inside. Can I help you Rosie? Rosalie was startled by his voice. She had not heard him come up behind her. He seemed to have appeared from nowhere. I'm sorry Rosie. I didn't mean to scare you. Please come inside. The affair between Rosalie and Grady had lasted an intense two months. They had made good use of every chance for a sexual encounter. Then the affair had ended, without explanation. Soon after, Julianne had announced that she was carrying Grady's child. Grady held the door ajar for Rosalie to enter. Feeling rather uneasy, Rosalie hesitated. Do come in. He urged her a second time. Mrs. Julianne needs you. She will be delivering, any minute now. Julianne will be okay. She is young and has yet to learn that giving birth is a natural process. I will be at her side, as soon as the baby is here. Taking Rosalie's hand in his, Grady led her over to a soft canopy bed. With ruffled covers and matching throw pillows that Carol had sewn. The bed served as a lavish embellishment to an otherwise plain room. Have a seat Rosie. We should talk. Grady's gaze was intense as he sat next to her, gently caressing her belly. When will you have this child? It is almost time, she said. I've had sharp pains since yesterday. Rosalie, you are a very strong woman, he remarked. You still amaze me, he boasted. I just want you to know that the child you are carrying will never be sold. Have you told Nathaniel the news? No. I thought it would be best that I tell you first. Why me? I'm afraid, she started, what do you have to be afraid of? Haven't I always been good to you? Yes. And I appreciate you for that. Nothing is guaranteed for me and my child. I cannot take anything for granted. Rosie, you're not making much sense. Rest assured, you can tell me anything, he said. This is your child, she blurted. Had it been Nathaniel's, it would have been here more than a season ago. Grady was neither surprised nor disappointed. He sat for a time without uttering a word to Rosalie. His silence troubled Rosalie. What are you going to do? She could hardly wait for his answer. Tears filled her eyes and rolled down her cheeks. She knew it was quite probable that she and her infant would soon be sold. She was not like the others. 
she did not have Loveland blood flowing through her veins, an essential attribute she assumed, as to why their slaves had been treated, with such dignity. I'm not going to take your baby. I just have to think for a minute. Go back to your room, and we will talk later. Just as she was about to leave, Rosalie felt a tremendous pain. It was unlike anything that she had ever experienced. She had experienced a painless delivery, when she had given birth to Nathaniel's twins. But now, she felt as if she was being punished, for her sins. She fell to her knees, holding her belly. In only a few seconds, she was soaked in amniotic fluid. Dear God! Grady exclaimed. What am I going to do with you? He picked her up and carried her down the hallway. Lizzie, he called. Come here. His voice almost trembled, as he shouted for assistance. What's wrong? What happened to her? She will be fine. She is about to deliver. Get the door for me. Lizzie kicked the door ajar, and Grady gently placed Rosalie on the bed. He lingered momentarily, holding her tiny hand. Don't worry. You and your baby will always be taken care of, he promised. His voice was soothing. And the comfort of his words, gave her a sense of security, in that moment. Mary Angel came in moments later, carrying a little squirming bundle. She had been eager to learn what all the shouting had been about. So she used the baby as her excuse for leaving Julianne alone. Mr. Loveland, you have a daughter, she announced. A very beautiful daughter. Grady was so overwhelmed with emotions, that he did not take time to look at the baby, when Mary Angel handed her over. Take care of Rosie, will ya? She is about to deliver. I will go to Julianne now. When Grady entered the room, Julianne was already, in a deep sleep. You did good, he said softly. She did not hear him. The trauma of giving birth had completely drained her. Grady sat beside her for a moment, holding her hand. How he loved the feel of her supple skin. It was soft as that of a baby's. Grady wondered, how his wife would react, if she found out about the affair. Loveland men were known for mating with enslaved women. But Grady had promised his wife that he would not. Technically, he had not. With Rosalie it had been different, Grady had tried to convince himself. He had actually developed real feelings for her. Feelings that he dared not express. Of course that would not be an acceptable explanation to Julianne. Adultery was wrong, no matter how he felt about the person that he was having an affair with. Satisfied that Julianne would be okay, he placed the baby into the cradle, and went to check on Rosalie. He knocked, and Mary Angel appeared at the door, holding another little bundle. That was fast, he said. She looks just like your baby, she told Grady. Her voice was filled with amazement. Grady took the baby from her. His heart thumped heavily. As he looked down at her, he knew that this beautiful child, was of Loveland descent. Her striking features were unmistakable. She resembled Grady's mother. His father had tried to teach him differently, but Grady could not help feeling a bond, as he held the little girl. This perfect little child deserved his love. His life was definitely, going to change. There was no way he could keep this secret forever. Julianne would see the family resemblance in the child. Grady cared for Julianne dearly and did not want to hurt her. Although he could never confess it, he had fallen in love with Rosalie and was determined, that he would never sell her, or her baby, something that Julianne would surely demand of him, if she discovered their secret. Grady's mind was clouded with decisions to be made. He forgot to give the baby back to Mary Angel. She stood there dumbfounded, as he entered their bedroom, carrying Rosalie's baby. Mary Angel, I want to see my baby. Rosalie sounded weak. She barely had enough strength to lift her head from the pillow. To Rosalie's dismay, Mary Angel turned around empty-handed. I don't know how to tell you this. Mr. Loveland took your baby with him, she said. Rosalie's greatest fears seemed to be coming true. Please bring my baby back. Please, you have to talk to him. He will listen to you. Rosalie, it's all right. He won't sell your baby. But there is another problem. Oh no. What's wrong? Mr. Loveland took your baby to their room. What? There's something that you should know. Your baby, and their baby, look just alike, added Lizzie. She was eager to get to the bottom of it. How did that happen? 
you'll find out sooner or later. I guess I may as well tell you now. Rosalie would have to confess to Nathaniel, so she thought it best that she be the one to tell them. Delilah is not Nathaniel's child, admitted Rosalie. Who is Delilah? Lizzie asked. That's what I am naming her. Delilah. The name is given to those who possess great beauty. Grady suggested it. She is a loveland. Grady is her father. But you must tell no one. Mary Angel and Lizzie possessed no feelings of loyalty for Rosalie, but they both promised to keep the secret, in order to protect Grady. Rosalie trusted that they would. What about Nathaniel? Lizzie inquired. I will tell him when I return home. If Mrs. Julianne finds out, my baby and I will be sold. Julianne sat up, just as Grady opened the door, bringing with him a greatly appreciated draft of cool air from the hallway. The heat from the fireplace had her sweating. Bring me the baby, honey. Is it a boy or girl? Ha! Huh. Grady had forgotten that he was still holding Rosalie's child. The baby, silly. Do we have a boy or girl? Don't tell me you haven't checked. Oh. We have a girl. Well, let me hold her, she insisted. No, he protested without meaning to. I mean, you need your rest. He hurried past her and placed the infant into the cradle with their daughter. Just as Mary Angel had said, the babies were strikingly similar. Grady Loveland, don't be ridiculous. I have to name her. I cannot name her, if I haven't seen her, Julianne complained. You're right. What was I thinking? Grady realized, he could not tell the two of them apart. They were identical. Grady was shocked that such an occurrence, was even possible. If it had not happened to him, he would never have believed it. He had no idea which one was his wife's child. He frantically chose one, handed her over to his wife and hoped that she would not suspect a thing. Julianne instantly fell in love with the little girl. Oh, she is so precious. Look at her Grady. I will call her Courtney. Courtney Marie Loveland. How does that sound? Sounds like you have given it a lot of thought. He kissed her head. I told you everything would be okay, Julianne. Now we have a beautiful daughter. Julianne nodded in agreement. You were right. And you were also right about me needing to get some rest. I am exhausted. Take her back to the bed for me. Well, I think I will let Rosalie and the others see her. After all, they will take a part in raising her. Rosalie. Her stay in this house is only temporary, she snapped. I don't want the likes of her around my child. Now don't go getting all upset. It's not good for you. We can talk about this later. No, she demanded. Julianne was not about to let him avoid the discussion. We will talk now. You need to wise up and open your eyes, Grady. She's not Queen Elizabeth. Well, she very well could be. What does that mean? I don't know why you insist on treating them like our equals. How do you think that makes white folks feel? They are slaves. We own them, for the sake and love of heaven, she yelled. You know my view on this matter, and I am not concerned about what people think of me. How many times do I have to repeat myself, Julianne? One day there will be new laws and all of them will be freed. It's only a matter of time now. And they will have the same rights as we do. The world is changing. We have no choice but to change with it. The last thing we need is a former slave seeking revenge on us. Well, for now they are slaves Grady. Her voice had calmed down considerably. And they should be treated as such. She closed her eyes and inhaled deeply while gently massaging her temples with the tips of her fingers. The stress that she was feeling, had caused her head to ache tremendously. Let's continue this conversation later. I'll take the baby to Lizzie, have her cleaned up. Get your rest. Grady left with the infant. He hurried back to the room where Rosalie and her roommates were anxiously awaiting his return. I have a problem and I need your help, he said as he gave the infant to Lizzie. The babies are identical. I may have mixed them up. What? Rosalie was alarmed. It's okay. It's simple. Mary Angel, I need you to bring the other baby. But won't Mrs. Julianne think it's strange that you just left with the baby, and now I'm coming back, to get the baby? 
just do it quietly. She is out of it right now. I gave her a stiff drink with a little something added. She won't remember a thing. Julianne was just about to lift the baby from the crib, when Mary Angel entered the room. You should stay in bed after all you've been through. You need your rest, she insisted. I'll take care of the baby. Courtney. That's her name, said Julianne. How lovely. Little Miss Courtney. Lizzie is going to love looking after this one. I'm jealous. She picked the infant up and looked at her with adoring eyes. What would I ever do without you, and Lizzie? I suspect, you'd do just fine. Mary Angel returned, and everyone was amazed, at the resemblance between the two babies. I cannot believe it. How can they look so much alike? Lizzie was not expecting an answer, but could not help voicing her thoughts. She's so beautiful, whichever one she is, said Rosalie, sitting up to get a better view. Okay, Grady interrupted the ladies, this is the plan. Rosie, you will be back with your family by the time Julianne is ready to get out of bed. Hopefully by then, there will be some change in her color. And in the meantime. In the meantime, just pick one and I will take the other. Grady's voice was clearly full of frustration. He was disappointed in himself, for not coming up with a better plan. They expected him to think of a better arrangement than that. If Rosalie chose the wrong baby, Julianne would most likely be the first to notice that her child was becoming darker. There would be no explaining it away. Grady would be forced to tell her the whole ugly truth. Rosalie took the infant from Lizzie and held her close. Quite a few years had passed, since she was the mother of a newborn baby. Her twins were now thirteen years old. She had missed the feeling of someone needing her for the simplest of things. The baby nuzzled her head against her mother's warm bosom, instinctively searching for nourishment. This is Delilah. Rosalie announced. Grady was confused. How can you tell? Trust me, a mother knows.